This is a short chapter, chapter 14, specifically on human inheritance and some of the patterns that we see with the traits that humans have. Our op opening story is kind of interesting and cute at the same time. The story of uh, parafraternal twins who, if you look at the picture, look very different from each other, but each parent uh, though they may have African-American descent, also have grandparents of European descent. And so one of their little girls is quite light-skinned as opposed to how her fraternal twin sister looks and how her parents look. There's also a neat picture of a bunch of arms placed together on page 203 that show the different colorations that are capable in humans from very dark to very light and skin color can be considered a adaptation for humans depending on where you live it's affected by environment if you live in a area that has direct sunlight it'd be an adaptation to have darker skin to protect you from the UV rays. But if you lived in an area with less direct sun, then you'd have an adaptation to be lighter skinned to be able to uh, absorb enough sunlight to make enough vitamin D. So it's found that light skinned people of European descent carry a mutation in gene, here's the name of the gene, SLC24A5, that encodes a transport protein in melanosome membranes. Whether that uh, allows the pigment melanin out or not. Geneticists study inheritance patterns in humans by tracking genetic disorders and ab abnormalities through families. A genetic abnormality is an uncommon version of a heritable trait, so it's a different allele that does not result in medical problems, but a disorder does result in medical problems sooner or later and can be from mild to severe. A pedigree is a chart often used to track family history of certain disorders or abnormalities and look a lot like this. This is a famous pedigree for Queen Victoria of England and her husband Edward and uh, then Queen Victoria and her husband Albert and it's known that Queen Victoria was a carrier of a certain gene for blood clotting and if you receive that gene and were male you tended to get what's called hemophilia so here's the famous part uh, we'll look at this a little bit later but this is the last Tsar of, Ru Ru of Russia Nicholas who married Alexandra who was from England, a relative of Queen Victoria. And then they had five children, Olga, Tatiana, Maria, Anastasia, and Alexei. And their son had hemophilia, and it was known that it came from the mother's side. And that's how a pedigree can be used. You can follow this pedigree further to some common names here. Actually, it's incomplete because uh, somebody down here is married and has a child of his own now. For a pedigree, I'll add some other things. Circles mean females. Squares are males. Carriers are often shaded half in. Those are individuals who are heterozygous. And if you're affected, then you're colored in. These question marks are people who were unsure of whether they were 
carriers or not. They probably died of too young of an age to know. This line here is a children line. And when the line occurs between you, a circle and a square, that's a marriage line. Each line like this is a generation. So pedigrees can be very useful in tracking genetic disorders or abnormalities. For genetic variations, single genes that follow Mendelian inheritance patterns govern more than 6,000 genetic abnormalities and disorders. That's a lot. Most traits are polygenic, which means they're affected by multiple genes and often have environmental factors as well. Alleles that give rise to severe genetic disorders can be rare. We'll look at six main patterns of inheritance for genetic abnormalities and disorders. Autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked recessive, X-linked dominant, and changes to chromosome number and structure. Inheritance patterns in humans are determined by following traits through generations of family trees. An allele is inherited in an autosomal dominant pattern if the trait it specifies appears in homozygous and heterozygous people. An allele is inherited in an autosomal recessive pattern if the trait it specifies appears only in homozygous people. So for the first one, autosomal dominant, you would have the trait if you were big A, big A, or big A, little a. But the autosomal recessive pattern, you must be little a, little a to express it. Autosomal traits appear in every generation in a pedigree. And when one parent is heterozygous, the other is homozygous recessive, then you'll expect each child has a 50% chance of inheriting that dominant allele and displaying the trait. Here's what the Punnett square would look like for an autosomal dominant disorder or abnormality. It only takes one allele from an effective parent to make a 50% chance that children will be affected. Here's some examples of autosomal dominant disorders. Achondroplasia, which is dwarfism. Aniridia, which is defects of the eyes. Camptodactyly, which is rigid bent fingers. Hypercholesterolemia, high cholesterol levels. Huntington's disease, which is a degeneration of the nervous system. Marfan syndrome which is abnormal connective tissue, polydactyly, extra fingers and toes or both, progeria, which is drastic premature aging, and neurofibromatosis, which is tumors of the nervous system and skin. All of those would exhibit this pattern of inheritance. One of the uh, things to worry about in such as uh, like Huntington's disease is that um, Huntington's disease doesn't kick in until you're middle aged so generally you've already had children and will have the chance of 50 percent chance of passing it on. Huntington's disease results in death. In the autosomal recessive pattern, you must be homozygous recessive. So in pedigrees, you may see it skip generations. People who are heterozygous for the allele don't show the trait, and they are called carriers. Each child of two carriers has a 25% chance of having the trait. Here's what the Punnett square looks like. Two, home, or two heterozygous parents, neither of them have the trait, but a one-fourth or 25% chance 
that they may have the affected child. I see that on this slide, this is mislabeled. This should actually say normal child here and affected child here. Sorry about that. Here are some autosomal recessive disorders. Albinism, which is absence of pigmentation. Let me see if I can say this one even. Methamoglobinemia, blue skin coloration. Cystic fibrosis, which is abnormal glandular secretions leading to tissue and organ damage. Ellis Van Creveld, dwarfism with heart defects and polydactyly. Fanconi anemia, which is abnormalities in bone marrow failure. Galactosemia, brain and liver and eye damage. Hemochromatosis, iron overload and joint and organ damage. Phenylketonuria, or PKU, which is mental impairment. Sickle cell anemia, which um, is when your red blood cells sickle when in an acidic environment when you exercise. Carbon dioxide builds up in your blood that makes the blood become acidic, causing your red blood cells to sickle and Tay-Sachs disease, which is deterioration of mental and physical abilities and early death. Here's an example of albinism in an albino squirrel. They lack melanin. Again, the genotype of this squirrel would be little a, little a. Tay-Sachs disease, mutations um, cause gangliosides to accumulate to toxic levels in nerve cells, like this child here. Gangliosides are a lipid component of plasma membranes, so um, basically fat. Tay-Sachs disease is an example of an autosomal recessive disorder. And in the general population, about 1 in 300 people is a carrier for Tay-Sachs alleles. But the incidence is 10 times higher in some groups, such as Jews of Eastern European descent. The lipids accumulate to toxic levels in nerve cells, and they're not recycled properly by lysosomes. So affected in infants would seem normal at first, but symptoms would begin to appear, and within three to six months, the child would uh, become irritable, listless, and have seizures. Blindness, deafness, and paralysis would follow, and then they usually die by age five. Another pattern is X-linked inheritance. These are genes that are on the X chromosome. So remember that females, you'll have two copies of these, and males, only one. For most X-linked inheritance disorders are recessive, um, because X-linked dominant alleles tend to be lethal in male embryos. These disorders that are X-linked recessive tend to appear in men, more than women. Um, if they're recessive, that would mean that women would also have the dominant allele to cover up the recessive one. But if males receive the X chromosome with the recessive uh, allele, they'll display the trait because they don't have the dominant one to cover it up because the Y chromosome carries different genes than the X. Men can transmit their X-linked allele to their daughters, but never to their sons, because they give their X chromosome to daughters, but they give the Y chromosomes to sons. So only a woman would pass an X-linked allele to her boy. Here's some examples. Androgen insensitivity. So an XY individual but might have some female traits and sterility.
red-green color blindness, the inability to distinguish red from green. Looks like some of my spacing is off here. Uh, hemophilia, which is impaired blood clotting, muscular dystrophies, loss of muscle function, and X-linked and hydrotic mosaic skin, which is patches with or without sweat glands. Most genes involved in proper function of pigment containing receptors in the eyes are on the X chromosome, believe it or not. And so uh, color blindness includes a range of conditions in which an individual will have trouble distinguishing some or all colors. Some types of color blindness confuse red and green colors, um, causing people to see shades of gray and, instead of green, but be able to perceive blues and yellows quite well. Here's an example of what a Punnett square would look like for someone who has red-green color blindness. Uh, this would represent the little recessive C, the uh, or excuse me, right here is the little recessive C. It's kind of hard to tell the difference between the C's. So this is big C, little c. Because these are on the X chromosome, we include the X chromosome in these Punnett squares. And, whoa, here's another mistake I see in this Punnett square. The C should actually be on the X, not the Y. I'm going to take a minute and fix that. All right, I went ahead and changed my picture here. It has H's, which is fine, instead of C's. I actually like the H's better because I can tell big H from little h. So here's a female who is a carrier of the recessive colorblind allele, a male who has normal vision. And in their children, you can see how uh, the daughters will all be normal, though one or uh, half the daughters will be carriers. In the male, it's a male baby's 50-50 uh, chance that they'll be red-green colorblind. Notice the Y does not get a superscript letter because this gene is not on the Y chromosome. It's on the X. So this is the male cannot pass it to his sons, only his daughters. So a, imagine if a little h was here on the males, then he would give it to all of his daughters, though you would have to have a mother who's either a carrier or colorblind in order to then have the daughter have it. Hemophilia A is another example of an X-linked recessive disorder. Its Punnett square would look exactly like the red-green color blindness pun Punnett square. And this is the young boy here in the Romanov family who got hemophilia. There he is right there being hugged by his sister Anastasia. This is the Tsar Nicholas, his wife Alexandria, who uh, is a relative of Queen Victoria who seems to have been a carrier of hemophilia allele and then passed it on to her daughter, who then passed it on to Alexandra, who then passed it to her son. Because he only has one copy of that bad allele and not another dominant one that's good to cover it up, he had hemophilia. Hemophilia is characterized by um, the inability to clot blood. So a simple bruise or a cut could cause severe bleeding. There's that Punnett square, or excuse me, pedigree again, showing the inheritance of this X-linked recessive disorder. In this type of pedigree, you see a lot of males with the disorder and a lot of female carriers. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is another example. 
The X chromosome holds about 10% of all human genes. So many traits are affected by alleles on this chromosome. And because men only get one copy of the X chromosome, there's a difference in the pattern of inheritance. So some other heritable changes we see are in total chromosome structure. They include duplications, deletions, inversions, and translocations. And these have been evolutionary important. So in prophase one of meiosis, crossing over occurs unequally between homologous chromosomes resulting in a duplication or a repeated section of a chromosome. In a deletion, this can be very severe, often lethal, you lose part of a chromosome. An inversion may or may not affect the health of the baby, could affect fertility as well but a structural rearrangement of a chromosome occurs in which a part becomes oriented in the reverse direction. A translocation where a piece of chromosome breaks off and attaches to a different chromosome or a different part of the same one. Most are reciprocal or balanced which mean the two chromosomes exchange the broken parts equally. and sometimes, usually, actually have no adverse, or adverse effect because that uh, gene can still be translated into a protein even if it's on a different chromosome. Fertility could be affected. Here's a picture showing some of those instances with the deletion showing gene D being lost in the duplication BC area was duplicated. In inversion, this area was flipped around or reversed. And in a translocation, this piece moves to a different place, one chromosome to another. Some of these occur often during DNA replication and some during crossing over of meiosis. Huntington's disease is a result of expansion mutations or duplications. Cri de Chez syndrome, also known as cry of the cat syndrome, is a deletion disorder. Individuals with Cri de Chez have an abnormal larynx, so when they cry, they sound like a cat crying. They often have mental impairment. Burkitt's lymphoma is due to a translocation, and that's a aggressive cancer of the immune system. Most major alterations would be harmful or lethal in humans. But even so, many major structural changes have occurred in chromosomes of all species over evolutionary time, and also causes then speciation or changes into new species. If chromosome numbers or uh, patterns are changed, often some individuals can't reproduce anymore with their regular population and new species arise within that population. It's thought X and Y chromosomes were once homologous um, in reptile-like ancestors of mammals but about 350 million years ago, a gene on one chromosome mutated, interfering with crossing over during meiosis, and then mutations began to accumulate separately in the two chromosomes. Today, the SRY gene, which is on the Y chromosome, determines male sex. It's a gene that kicks in testosterone during male development in the uterus. One human chromosome matches two in chimpanzees and other great apes.
So it's thought that two chromosomes fused end to end to form our chromosome number two. Occasionally abnormal events occur before or during meiosis and new individuals end up with wrong chromosome numbers. Um, consequences could be minor to lethal. Non-disjunction is an abnormal chromosome number and affects uh, the chromosome number at fertilization and causes genetic disorders in the resulting offspring. And non-disjunction occurs when during meiosis homologous pairs should separate into s to separate gametes but instead they stick together and therefore go together and end up in the same gamete. Then that gamete has too many copies after fertilization. So imagine a gamete like a sperm or an egg having two copies of chromosome number 21 and then fertilization happens bringing one more copy. Now they have three copies. That's called trisomy. like this. And monosomy is when they only have one copy of a certain chromosome. Remember we're diploid organisms so we should have only two copies of each chromosome with exception of the X and the Y. Aneuploidy. In individual cells have too many or too few copies of cro the chromosomes as a result of non-disjunction. Most cases are lethal in embryos, but not all. Trisomy is when you have an extra copy of chromosome 21. Monosomy, you have only one copy. A polyploid is an individual that has three or more of each type of chromosome. This is common in plants, but usually lethal in humans. Again, we're diploid. We should have two copies of each chromosome, not three copies. Here's some examples of disorders with changes in chromosome number. Again, most of these are lethal in humans except Down syndrome and then a lot of these the rest are involving the X and Y chromosome these seem to uh, be less susceptible to death so Down syndrome again an extra number 21 characteristics include upward slanting eyes certain facial features and tend to have mental impairment and heart problems they have a distinctive look to their facial features. Here's a karyotype with someone who has trisomy 21 or Down syndrome. Here's three copies of the 21. Every other has its regular two copies. Because 21 is such a small chromosome, infants with Down syndrome can survive. But most of the time when you have extra other chromosomes you would die before birth or soon after. Still is severe effects though. It correlates with the age of the mother because a uh, mother who is older is less effective at meiosis. You're much more likely to have these extra copies of chromosomes occur. Changes in sex chromosome numbers. We'll go over these. Turner syndrome is when you have only one X chromosome. Here's a karyotype of Turner syndrome with just the one X. Females who have this have varied effects but tend to be quite short, um, having a web neck and usually sterile. 
although some don't even know they have it until they try to have babies and get a karyotype done. Trisomy X, also sometimes called a super female, I like that name, um, usually you're pretty normal if you have this because what happens, uh, because we have two X chromosomes in females um, and then males only have the XY, in every cell of the body one of the X's actually gets deactivated and the other X is the one that um, is expressed. So with having th three X's, uh, two of those actually become inactivated and so like normal females each cell is only run on one X chromosome. With males, Klinefelter syndrome is XXY. They tend to be overweight, tall, and within normal range of intelligence. But they tend to make more estrogen and less testosterone, so this can have feminizing effects. Like this young man here, who has a bit of breast development, but not too bad. Here's his karyotype, XXY. Jacob's syndrome, which is XYY. There's the karyotype. Tend to be slightly taller, more active, but normal intelligence usually. Sometimes delayed emotional maturity, but usually normal sex development. So a chromosome may undergo a large-scale permanent change in its structure or number and can result in genetic disorders. Genetic screening is becoming quite popular with couples wanting to know if their baby has more or less number of chromosomes than what's considered normal or for other disorders like PKU. With PKU, phenylketonuria, if you get uh, screened right away, you can actually follow a diet throughout your life that will stop any problems. So it would be important to be screened for this upon birth so that you would know to start that, that certain diet right away and then you could have normal phenotype. Here's some examples of different prenatal tests that can be done on embryos and fetuses. Um, some of these are quite invasive though and then would therefore run some risk. Ultrasound is one of the least invasive obviously. Forms images of the fetus and um, developing limbs and such, internal organs, this can kind of be a, a telltale sign of if there's any problems since people with Down syndrome tend to have shorter limbs. Embryos would as well. Fetoscopy is uh, putting the embryo on camera with a uh, camera and a tube inserted. Amniocentesis is taking a look at the cells that are shed into the amniotic fluid. This would involve a needle being inserted, sucking out some of those cells. Obviously there's a risk with this, with the puncturing. But with the cells, a karyotype can be done and you can see if the normal amount is there. Chorionic villus sampling is when um, down here on the end little villi form off the placenta and samples of that can be taken. Those cells would, would have the karyotype of the fetus. And again you can do a karyotype and tell if it's a normal amount of chromosomes or not. 
um, clump of cells, uh, pre-implantation diagnosis, before people get implanted, a clump of cells formed by three mitotic divisions, and a cell can be removed for genetic analysis to determine whether the embryo has any genetic defects. Provides information with genetic testing about the risk of passing a harmful allele to one's offspring. After conception, various methods of prenatal testing can reveal a genetic abnormality or disorder in a fetus or embryo. So the shades of skin revisited, the people of Chinese descent carry an allele of the DCT gene, which results in conversion of the amino tyrosine to melanin. And um, distribution of the gene SLC24A5 and the DCT gene suggests that African population was ancestral to both Chinese and Europeans and Chinese and European populations separated before their pigmentation genes mutated and their skin color changed. Make sure you uh, read the chapters, read about the disorders a little more closely, and also do the questions in both chapters 13 and 14.